Okay, this is the image that I've decided I'm going to turn into a rug. Um, I really like it a lot and I think it's going to come out looking awesome. In order to do a rug, we need to flip the image to an exact opposite of what it is now. We need to do that so that in the end, the rug will look proper from the front side. And to do so, we need to do the image in reverse as we're working on it. Uh, I doubt I explained myself very well right there, but this will become evident later on as we move along. Alrighty, so let's first flip this duck the opposite. And there we have the same image, but flipped around um, opposite. This is the way I'm going to project it onto the backing and that we'll be working on the rug from this point um, and we'll show that here shortly let's move on now we need to get our canvas stretched for the rug okay in order to make rugs you are going to need a frame and this is the one that I built um, just got some simple things down there Ports, and I screwed mine together um, and that way if I have to dismantle it I can now also what I like about this particular thing is the fact that I am presently limited to that width of fabric that I have there and I don't remember what it is it's about four feet wide so a little bit wider but if I get bigger wider fabric or have a project I need to make wider I can re just replace that top bar going across that top board and that bottom board with a longer one by unscrewing it, putting a longer one in and a matching length one at the top and then I can do it as wide as whatever the fabric is or design I need to do. Um, so I like this one for that reason. Um, this also has the target, uh, the target it has the carpet packs it's called something else I couldn't tell you what it is right now and I'm not good but it's called blue hawk carpet strips carpet something they sell about 10 of them for like four dollars at Home Depot here in the states um, and I put a little bit of a yarn feeder on mine for two different color, kinds of yarn not colors two different yarns well, I'm getting this all messed up, but I'm still going to roll with it. And anyways, that's my frame. And again, there's Mr. Wonderful. But now we're going to go ahead and have to stretch our backing over this frame. And we'll go from there. All right. And I 
end up going over mine several times because I want it super taut. But now that we got the basic part up there, I'll go ahead and go back over it and stretch it all again. Here again, though I've gone down this side, I have this line in the fabric that allows me to line it up with that 2x4 and know that I'm getting a reasonably straight stretch on this fabric. Um, I will say too that the tufting done um, goes straighter up and down if your lines are straight up and down. Now this is one thing too, I use this fabric now, uh, I've heard it called primary tufting cloth, so that's the only name I know to call it by. Uh, mine I purchased through Alibaba after getting a sample, and I love it. At the end of the day I don't have, at the end of the rug I don't have near as many errors, holes, or anything. Um, the tufting gun, when I use it on this fabric, I'm going to use, say it's like, like butter. I control everything and where that gun goes and the fabric allows me to do that. With this mumps cloth that I got previously from Joanne's Fabrics, I don't know if it's just that or what, but I've seen the same bunks class sold at Walmart and similar things and that gave me nothing but holes just a nightmare just a nightmare I know some people really like it and that's great I wish them the best of luck with it I had no alrighty I wanted to show you too the little mini projector that I use Let's see if I get it in there it's just a little mini projector basic stuff on it but it shoots my image up on that backing and has all the good stuff on the side and enough to get it to work anyways that's what I'll be using to transfer the image onto the backing whereas once I've done that I'm going to trace the image that's projected and get my pattern for what I'm going to make into a rug right all right, I wanted to show you what the monk's cloth looked like that I had used for my th first three or four rugs. And I just had horrible results with it. I hope you'll be able to see it. Um, the thread count is pretty sh thick. But anyways, when my gun stuck my gun in there, this stuff fought it. Anytime I tried to make a corner or anything round, this stuff fought it and made it go the direction it wanted to as opposed to this stuff and um there we go we got a good shot out of these that's that stuff the, the gun just moves around like butter like i say you definitely control it let's see one more time if i can't get a better shot of this stuff i have no idea if that's working or not Probably not, but anyways, I did not like this stuff at all. I love this stuff. Alright. Sure say that a lot too. Okay, at this point I have my laptop hooked up to my projector, which is projecting up on the Turn the lights off and there you see my duck. And that's the duck that I'm going to be go ahead and tracing in that. I'm going to get a closer view of this so that you can see what I got going on. Cool. Alright, you'll also need a tufting gun or at least that's this is what I use for my rugs. Now I got this one from eBay through China and I'm super happy with it. I believe the present time the this model goes for like 135 on eBay. 
made. Anyways, that is that. You'll also need a yarn winder, and I'll show you that in a minute. Plenty of yarn. This is just my leftover stuff. A glue gun. And I don't know what else, but we'll get into that later. I'll buy it. What a good dog. Let me have Let me have Let me have You're such a wonderful dog. Here, one more time. Oh, shit. He's okay. I love you, little dog. Say hi. Alrighty. Peace out. Okay, so here we are again. Where we have this uh, backing stretched up over the cloth. And I've got the image up there in the way I want it this time. Okay, well, this is the end result with my duck. As far as we drawn it back on there, got to fix that neck thing, but we're good. Kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to be going with here. Alrighty, let's get our yarn ready. Okay, this is my yarn winder, and you'll need one of these. Um, you have basically end up taking your yarn, flipping it through there. Winding it over through that little top gap right there. And then you start a winding it. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and need to thread our gun. And for that, you're gonna need a tufting gun. And you need some thread yarn. And I use one of these here. Thread pullers. I've seen them listed as um, hair extension pullers. All kinds of things but they're really reasonable on Amazon okay with that in mind hold on my guns messed up and what I mean by messed up is I'll show you in just a second here uh, the scissors part is pointed the scissors part is pointed out longer than I want I can't get the thread the yarn to it right now the hole isn't exposed when that happens, I just turn it on, and it resets itself, as you see. Okay, with that, as you can see, there's a little hole in there. I got to push this here thing through that hole, and then push it through the eyelet. Oh, I'm way off. I hope you can see this through the eyelet, at which time, I'll expand the opening on the wire, put my yarn through it, and simply pull it back through, and it threads through there then. And that is ready to go as far as getting this gun ready to tuck. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, on this particular rug, I've decided I want to do a black border around the whole thing. I'll end up putting about a, a one inch border around everything. Um, that's what I'll use for my color to roll it over and finish the rug with. So to just to get started, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. You just punch, punch the rug in, punch the tool in. It'll go up to this here piece right here. That's your guide or whatever. Punch it in. Hold the front of it with this hand. Use your left hand, uh, right hand for the trigger, and start going. All right, I just wanted to point out as we're going along here, you'll get these that hang out like this as you're going along. There's nothing there's nothing bad, nothing good about them. Um, just go along and trim them. 
as I go, and that just makes it easier for me to clean up at the end instead of doing them all at the same time at the end. I just like to clean mine up as I go and call it good. Let's me also be able to see more of what's going on here and what I've done and haven't done. All right. Just want to, okay, I'm going to go ahead and add some color to the build. I'll show you how it pops out from this side. We'll be adding two colors of yellow to it. And I want a little bit of this darker stuff up in my, my beak. Okay, and then up by his nose. Or whatever you want to call it. Let me see. Okie dokie, I got the lighter yellow loaded up in the tufting gun. So we're going to add that to the beak too. Just a minute, I gotta retuck this gun. I just pulled the thread out because I stepped on it. Happens a lot, believe it or not. I make all kinds of new gears, and I don't care. I just continue to have fun. Alrighty, here we go, some yellow. And Mr. Duck Duck's bill. I want to put white in here through this neckline, but again, I'm going to try to follow this line so I'm not getting all messy. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm liking that. I don't even care what it looks like on the other side at this point, I'm liking it.
All right, at this point, I just wanted to point out that I'm dang near done here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put like a one inch black border around here. And if it gets a little thicker than that, I'm not worried about it. But that is for is that when we're done with the rub, we'll end up folding this over, the edge over. And I want that solid so that when it folds over, it doesn't show bare white spots of this material. So I put a nice one inch thick black border around here or somewhere close and then um, then we'll be ready to glue it up and get going with this. We're almost done folks. Um, right. Alright, time to glue. Let the mess begin. Definitely want to get an even coat, and the way I look at it is anything, any yarn that doesn't have glue on it isn't going to stick. It'll get sucked out by the vacuum cleaner later on. And we'd like to keep the yarn that we have in the rug in the rug. So, myself, I just keep going back and forth until I see everything's covered. Everything, everything. I don't think, I mean, a, a, even a thicker coat of glue that I put on, I don't think you'd hurt anything by doing it. I make sure my edges are all good and covered. And just keep spreading it around. It spreads really easy, as you can see. Again, it just is a mess if you don't have anything under it catching the stuff when it goes. I know. You can see my carpet in, in some of my videos in my hobby room here. Uh, <laughs> it's seen better days. Alright, the rug got glued and as you can see, my hands are really dirty other than that. The glue doesn't stick to it because um, it's it's totally dry. Not totally dry, but certainly dry enough for me to work with from here. I'm going to go ahead and take that off the rack, trim it up, and then get ready to put some backing stuff on it. Be back in a minute. Alright, I'm going to pull this bad boy off the rack now. as well as unstretching it. I always leave the top hanging for last, simply so the rub don't fall off on me before I plan on it falling off. And it came off pretty nice. Not a problem at all. When I trim this, I like to leave about two inch edge on there. That gives me plenty of material to fold over underneath there. And if you see that, this is still tacky, that this, that'll come in handy. Um, but you can fold it over and get a little bit of the, the material underneath there so that when you're gluing your bottom on, you get that full edge of uh, yarn. But then you also get two or three, two inches or so tucked under here so you don't have it real trimmed to the edge where it'll ravel, fall back out, or however you want to word that. All right, I'm going to trim Mr. Duck up. On this first trim too, I'm, I'm just making sure that I've left myself enough 
before than try to get it too short. Um, and if I have left myself enough, I may not even have to trim it later. I can just tuck it all underneath. Finding ways to cut down on time on your finishing work is things you'll end up uh, finding ways to do. And I'd like to say too that I've only been doing these rugs for possibly six months at best. And um, I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. But I think I've came a long ways in six months. And I'm certainly having the time of my life doing these. I make about a rug a week. And all I do is just give them away as gifts. Um, but. I think it allows me to give people a unique gift, and that's what makes it special. Plus, I'm a pretty spastic old man, and it gives me something to do. So I like that a lot. All right, we've got it down to, to that shape at this point. And now all I'm gonna do is go in and cut these up to the yarn level. If you can even see that. Yep, all right. Just want to make sure you're working here. Okay, and I cut it just in little, little strips. On some of the straightaways, I don't cut as much, but. And these are all going to end up being folded back in. I like having little strips so I can kind of, if the rug gets out of shape, I can shape it back in through either pulling more back or less back and get the line back in where I want it. But if you haven't begun tufting yet, I can tell you that my experience is I again having the time of my life with this thing. I just love it. I work a, a regular 40 hour to well during now during harvest uh, we'll be putting in probably 60, 70 hours. But I work a full-time job, and there's not, I just got off work now after half a day on Sunday. Um, there's not a day that doesn't go by that I no, don't look forward to coming home from work and working on my rugs. I just, it, it's just been a blessing to me. Everybody that's got rugs for me, like them. I look forward to improving my quality and learning this task. Um, there's a guy that I've watched videos from the Ukraine, who is what I would say my mentor in this. Um, not sure what I'm going to do here yet. But I'm far from where I want to be, but I'm far from where I started to. So if you haven't gotten off, got your stuff yet, I would, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, just that you have the investment of a tufting gun, um, which I see on eBay now, they're 135 bucks, I think, the one that I have, and um, a yarn winder. You will need to build the frame, and um, I don't think there's not much investment to get started beyond that of being yarn. And I use Gorilla Glue on the back of mine to spray my stuff. The backing material in your tufting cloth. But I would highly encourage you to get involved. I think you'll love it just as much as I do. You know, I will be doing a custom rug giveaway after this video gets up, um, and I'll announce a contest um, where I'm going to make the winner a custom rug of their choice of the design and mail it to them any place in the world, free of charge. The rug's free, the shipping's free, so I, I look forward to that getting exciting. Um, like I said, I'll be announcing that 
within two weeks of this video going up. So that's not long. Alrighty, now... Well, we went and got us some batting. You can see I got my favorite helper here. But we got some batting. A lot of batting. What I got there is I picked up six yards of it. It's six dollars a yard. And it's just this stuff. Puffy, puffy stuff. Um, but also at six dollars a yard, it was 30% off. So I'm pretty dang unhappy about that. Alright, monkey boy, you gonna help me? Oh, don't take off. Baby, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? You little fart. What a fart. Okay. So at this point, I'm gonna just trim me off a piece. It's gonna be sufficient. where it's going to be, hold up half of it, the cool thing is this stuff is still sticky to a little bit, it, since I'm going to be walking on the rug here shortly, um, it helps bind that into, to make sure we get something glue, I need the Gorilla Glue, and here I spray this right up to where I've got my threads, because everything else is going to fold over, and I, I get enough glue on my hands and everything else from this. That way just eliminates some of it. But I certainly make sure there's a good bead around the edge. Side back. Back out. Mush it all together. And that's about it for that part. I'm gonna cut for a minute. Trim it right to the yarn spot okay, or someplace close to that.
this particular route I'm making for a Christmas present for one of my friends who's uh, absolutely an avid outdoors person. He is everything outdoors and then some. So, I think he's going to like it. Stuck a little bit extra in there because it cut a little closer than I wanted. But certainly this doesn't have to be exact at all, but anything close is going to work with it because you're going to form the edge very shortly. Oh yeah, my friend Green, he's me, Ben Thomas. He's a wonderful human being. Just a nice, decent, good human being. Alright, now we have a puppy duck. I almost have a mind to put a little bit more in the center of this one. And literally make him a puffy duck. And see what happens. But I also think that batting's thick enough that I'm gonna leave it like it is. We're gonna roll with this. Okay. From that point, I go ahead, take my fantastic Gorilla Glue again. I'm gonna have a problem with this beacon. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. But I'm gonna figure out how to go, I guess. Same thing, I pour it, pour, I don't pour it. I shoot this Gorilla Glue all around my edge. Personally, again, I try not to get it on as much on this part as I do a two inch strip here. This dead on the move will take the bait to get off short of that. Any less time with it on my fingers, I'm happy about it. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and plug away and start here. Just back some, enough for it to roll over, like I said. And now, you, if you're wondering, how does he know what's on the other side? I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna flip it over some, trying to get so much of an equal length here. I don't like that. But we're gonna work around that. I'm gonna pull that back farther under. Oh, I remember that part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Anyways. doing is pulling this back as you can see rolling some of it under this is going to allow me to put the next layer on here and then end up with the result like that with out stuff like this showing up this see, I don't know if it's a little thinner there but anyways I'll make it work so yeah when we flip her over some and see what do we have do we like it 
Yes. We like it. Okay. Carry on. Okay. I've um put these all over. I've checked the other side of the rug and I like what I see over there. And so now I'm gonna put some backing material on it. I found a piece of stuff that a uh, scrap that coincidentally fits this size rug. And I will most definitely take advantage of that. Alright, with that, I spray around my edge. Oops, a little, a little ahead of myself. First off, stretch out the piece to make sure it's gonna fit my back. And as long as it completely covers it. Good. Put back a piece of it. Actually, I'm going to go back from the end of it. There, right there. Go along the edge again. And this, I want to get some up on this little bit of an edge without going over, so I shoot it at an angle. some kind of chemical reaction that happens and like I just said it'll create wrinkles on the back but later on they go away. This is a piece of extra so I'll just trim that off right off the bat. Okay. Put this side back. Now you probably want to do this in a well, in a well ventilated area. Off. I'm 
Alright. We'll flip her over and see what the heck we got going on over here today. <clears throat> Alright. Looks like us. Like we got us a duck rug. All this stuff can be trimmed later. That's not an issue at all. We haven't got there yet. But some of them are driving crazy right off the bat. The trip crazy for me is a short trip. Oh, by the way, I gotta show you my shirt. That's right. All right, anyways. At this point in time, I'm gonna trim some of this off pretty close to the final edge. And we simply go around the rug and trim up into where it's sticking. see a little bit sticking on there and that's kind of that's what I'm looking for is to get as close as I can you see there this still shows I'll just end up trimming that last little bit later just to fine-tune it but we're gonna continue with this It's not going to look totally good on the back, 
You'll see I've got some trimming to do, but I can do it from this side at this point and get it down to where I want it. But for now, I'm gonna call that done. Um, from this.